हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल आई टी जे ओलम्पियाड्स एंड ए पी फिजिक्स विद अम्बरीश एंड इन टुडेज वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एड्रेस अ फाइन पॉइंट गिवन इन एन सी आर टी इन द चैप्टर ऑन यंग्स मॉडलर्स दैट्स मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मैटर एन सी आर टी गिवस फार्मूला विदाउट गिविंग द प्रूफ वॉट इज दैट दैट द डिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ अ सिंपली सपोर्टेड बीम इज गिवन बाई डेल्टा इज्कल टू डब्ल्यू एल क्यूब अपॉन फोर बी डी क्यूब वाई and ncrt doesn't give proof but says uh, something that's very tempting for uh, sharp students and what is that uh, this relation can be derived using what you have already learnt and a little calculus so many times sharp students they want to really know how how this can be derived and they try out uh, and it's super, really intriguing for a sharp student that how ncrt has stated this without proof and said that this can be derived using what you already learned and a little calculus so uh, today i am going to end all the suspense about how this relation can be derived okay and uh, th this falls under the theory called uh, euler beam bending equation and uh, i am going to derive the beam bending equation uh, in general case and then i am going to apply it to this specific case by the way uh, in this uh, question uh, in this formula d is supposed to be the thickness of the beam this is d okay thickness of the beam is d and then uh, this beam will have some depth the in inward depth so beam would in 3d the beam would be looking somewhat like that okay so there's some inward depth and b is supposed to be this inward depth and w is this weight and of course uh, this beam is bending uh, and it has to be supported somewhere so there's supposed to be supports from here so they will be offering some normal reactions from here some normal reaction from here and there and uh, both normal reactions are going to be w by 2 so uh now uh, uh how do we deal with this uh, bent beam so uh, in euler's theory uh, there are certain assumptions that we make uh we first of all make an assumption that this bending is not very large the bending amount is very small such that the slopes are very small so if the slopes are small then uh, for radius of curvature Uh, you must be aware of the formula that radius of curvature of any curve is given by one plus y dash square to the power three by two and divided by y double dash. But when the slope is very small, then y dash goes to zero and radius of curvature can simply be written as y one upon y double dash. And this result I am going to use uh, in my derivation. Okay, so let's see how to derive this. Okay. So now uh, let's look at the dynamics of it. What's going to happen? so uh, this normal reaction if you imagine it's uh, some cross section of this beam you imagine and suppose i draw the cross section separately and uh, this normal reaction will have and take a line about the cross section okay so this normal reaction will have some perpendicular distance in this case suppose it's exact the mid section so this normal reaction will have some torque about this mid section so the this is trying to bend the beam this the, the torque of this normal reaction is trying to bend the beam okay and then uh, what will happen in response to that so if you are trying to bend the beam some th uh, the fibers you can imagine mentally there are some fibers going inside the beam uh, for simplicity you might imagine it like a bamboo rod or something like that and it's made up of several fibers even if it's not made of ba bamboo you, you can even imagine steel fibers or rubber fibers or whatever so Uh, what will happen as the beam is bending you know that the uh, there will be certain mid pla mid plane in which the fibers will be neither in tension nor in compression and below the mid plane the fi the fibers are going to be in uh, uh, the stretching they will be in uh, tension and above the mid plane there's a tendency of fibers to be getting compressed so try to settle that in your mind what's the mechanism so uh, for imagination you can imagine that uh, you are holding a bamboo stick in your hand and then you are trying to bend it by holding it in uh, both hands and you are giving a torque about the mid section that's why it is bending so when you are bending in that process some of the fibers will get in compression and some other fibers they will uh, get in tension and because of the compression and uh, tension in those fibers uh, the there will be a restoring uh, torque developed uh, and uh, that's why the bamboo stick has a tendency of re uh, regaining its shape so the more the torque you apply the more is the bend and the more is the restoring torque provided by the fibers so how do we mathematically deal with it let us see okay 
so imagine that uh, this is the fiber oops i'm sorry uh, so imagine that uh, this is the fiber this this is the rod basically this is the rod which is bent a little bit small radius of curvature and this is the mid plane of the rod this is supposed to be the mid plane and uh, the fibers above the mid plane they are going to be in compression and fibers below the mid plane they are going to be in uh, stretching and this i have drawn the cross section uh, it doesn't matter the theory that i am going to derive is uh, equally valid for a rectangular section beam or a circular section beam here i have shown a circular section beam but i could as well have drawn a rectangular section it doesn't matter okay so this is the mid plane so this is the front view of the beam and this is the uh, cross section view of the beam so that's what so this mid plane looks like this okay so here is the mid plane and there's some line going through it and normal reaction is going to, to provide the torque about that okay so so first of all we assume that bending is small as i said that for applying uh, the radius of curvature formula r is equal to 1 upon y double dash we have to assume that bending is not very large okay now uh, let's imagine uh, another fiber in this uh, uh, in this rod let's imagine another fiber going from left to right at a height y above the mid plane so it's this is the fiber that i've shown in slightly bluish line uh, this is at a height of y above the mid plane and uh, this fiber is uh, going to get into compression okay so as i said some fibers are in compression and others are in tension uh, because the center of curvature is same for all these fibers so you see this is the center of curvature so for all the fibers this is the center of curvature and uh, this is the mid plane which is neither in tension nor in compression above this compression and below this tension okay now okay and what about the natural length of the beam so before the beam was bent all the fi fibers had the same length as the mid plane fiber right uh, so uh, natural length of all the fibers is r into theta where r is the radius of curvature up to the mid plane so this up to mid plane this radius of curvature is r please remember this is only till the mid plane r and theta is the angle in which the rod is bent okay so natural length of all the fibers is r theta now if we consider a fiber which is at a height y above the mid plane so what will be the length of this fiber so if you are taking y above the mid plane uh, so y above the mid plane so that means what the distance of this from the center of curvature will be r minus y because up till mid plane the radius is r so uh, at y height above the mid plane the radius is uh, capital r minus y so what is the length of this fiber since th theta is same for all the fibers so length of this fiber must be r minus y into theta okay so this is the natural length of the fiber and this is the compressed length of the fiber so now i can talk about the compressive strain in this fiber since this is in compression so compression compressive strain is final length minus initial length divided by the initial length and take the mod of that because i've already said that it's compressive strain so no need to write another negative so i've taken a mod so just subtract these two equations so subtract 2 and 1 so you know that r theta r theta vanishes you are left with y theta and you divide that by r theta so theta also vanishes and the compressive strain is simply y upon r okay now you imagine a cross sectional area small uh, the uh, on the cross section of the fiber so this is the cross section of the fiber and this is the mid plane this is basically mid plane mid uh, the mid line of the mid plane you can say that uh, line in the cross section okay so uh, mid line mid plane is going throughout the uh, length of the rod or beam and uh, if you take the cross section there's some line which will be the intersection of the mid plane and the cross section so this is the line that is i'm calling it mid line for short okay uh, this line is supposed to be the intersection of the mid plane with the cross section okay so now this these are the fibers which are in compression and these five this is some typical fiber which is in uh, elongation i'll be considering the fiber in compression first okay so let us say this is the fiber uh, which has some cross sectional area da okay and what is the strain in this fiber so we just just now calculated the compressive strain is y by r so what is the compressive stress so stress is simply y into epsilon y is the young's modulus so that is capital y into small y into r so i hope this is clear this is the compressive stress now what about the compressive force so you see this fiber is compressed and therefore it is trying to push the beam away that's why i put a circle just like magnetic field uh, going outward so this is the force that this element is giving 
outward force so that's why i've shown this and this is in tension so it will be giving an inward force and these two forces you see they form a couple about this mid plane and this couple is a restoring couple to balance the external torques acting on the beam okay so compressive force on this so compressive stress multiplied by this area da gives the compressive force so this is the compressive force i've just taken four and multiplied by da this is the compressive force now now i can have i have to talk about the torque about this uh, midline bb dash so what is the torque so you see the force is uh, acting on this and the perpendicular distance of this force from bb dash is y so the small amount of torque generated by this fiber uh, restoring torque generated by this fiber is simply this multiplied by another y so this is the d tau so i have just taken equation 5 and then mul multiplied by another y so that becomes y square so this is d tau y by r into y square da okay now y square da should tickle you because this is somewhat like in uh, moment of inertia we have y square dm suppose we had some disc and about diameter you found want, want to find the moment of inertia and if we have a dm mass over here and this is y so then integral of y square dm gives you the moment of inertia right so if i am going to find out the net torque i am going to integrate this over the entire cross section or or you can take from mid section to the top uh, and um, uh, double it or just integrate over the entire area and integration of y square da uh, is, is similar to moment of inertia we will be calling it by moment of area okay and uh, as i told you uh, the below fibers are also providing the torque in the same sense because these are trying to push the fibers outward and this is trying to pull the fibers inward so in the same sense about pb dash the torque is okay <coughs> now total trying total torque trying to restore the shape of the beam is given by just integration of this and that is y by r integration of y square da and i said that y square da is similar to moment of inertia with area replacing the mass so let us call it moment of area ia so that means what this torque the restoring torque is y by r into ia where ia is the moment of area and also for small slopes uh, if the beam is not bent heavily if the slopes are small everywhere i can write for radius of curvature radius of curvature can simply be written as 1 upon y double dash so i get uh, re then, then you put 1 by r as uh, y double dash and then you take the other terms on the other side and this is what you get y double dash is tau upon y times ia this is called the euler beam bending equation and it re relates the second derivative of y to the uh, torque ab about any section and of course if we know the torque function as a fun then we can integrate this equation to get the shape of the beam exactly uh, for various kinds of loadings so in our case we are just having a point load at the center of the beam but even for other kinds of loading we can use this equation i'll show you how we can use this equation for our current problem okay so i said that for equilibrium this shape restoring torque must be exactly balancing the external torque acting on any portion of the beam now let's apply this to the current problem so i am considering the sectional free body diagram of the beam so uh, this this part i am drawing the cross section i am taking this this section and considering the fbd of this so from point o this distance is x so this much distance is l by 2 minus x and the normal reaction if the, there's a point load w hanging at the mid the normal reactions are going to be w by 2 and this is also going to be w by 2 so two normal reactions w by 2 each now uh, you imagine this section uh, this is a cross section and let's say uh, there's a midline in this cross section and this is a normal reaction acting at a distance of how much l by 2 minus x so this distance is l by 2 minus x because this distance is x so what is the torque due to normal reaction that is w by 2 into l by 2 minus x okay so the torque about normal reaction torque of normal reaction about the midline must be exactly balanced by the restoring torque due to the fibers in compression and tension so we have the euler equation y double dash is tau upon y i a and tau i can write as what tau can be written as w by 2 into l by 2 minus x y normal reaction is w by 2 and the distance from this midline perpendicular distance is l by 2 minus x so i have got now a differential equation in y double dash uh, i mean d square y by dx square and x and uh, now i can integrate this equation uh, two two times to get the exact shape of the beam uh, but in our case we don't need the exact shape but we could have derived the exact shape also in our case we just need to know the deflection um, net deflection in the beam so 
let us uh, try this out so uh, if you integrate first you will get one arbitrary constant but you know that uh, at the this point the slope of the beam is zero at the lowest point where the weight is hanging the slope of the beam is zero so you know the initial condition that y dash is zero at x equal to zero and this is simple integration you integrate it with respect to x and in the appropriate limits or you evaluate the arbitrary constant based on the fact that y dash is zero at x equal to zero so you get this by integrating once y dash is w upon uh, just you this is a simple integration you can do mentally also and this is what you get okay so this is y dash okay now once i know y dash i can find the value of y also by once more integrating it with respect to x okay and now see uh, the diff this is the deflection so deflection is what suppose this is uh, taking this kind of a curve so deflection is nothing but the the vertical shift in the lowest point of this curve and the uh, this and the, and the value of the y coordinate of this curve at x equal to l by 2 is it not because this is the depression the end point is at this y coordinate and the um, midpoint is at this y coordinate so this is your delta okay so that means what delta is nothing but the value of y coordinate of the curve at x equal to l by 2 so now uh, i'm uh, again integrating this equation with respect to x and you know that at uh, x equal to l by 2 the y coordinate is simply delta the deflection of this beam okay so after integrating this what do we get as a simple integration uh, you can evaluate it so this is what you get so this is delta now whatever i have done so far is valid not just for a rectangular section beam but for any kind of section beam so long as it is symmetric for example you could have a beam section like this uh, damru kind of section so so long as upper half and lower half are symmetric about the mid plane you can apply this uh, why is that see uh, i use this directly that mid plane is not going to have tension or compression by symmetry because you also need to ensure that the integration of this uh, uh, compressive forces on the upper section should be exactly equal to the integration of the tensile forces at the lower section to ensure the force balance in the horizontal direction because normal reactions are vertical so they cannot provide any horizontal force balance that's why on any section the compressive force integration must be equal to the tensile force integration okay that and that's automatically ensured when you consider the mid section as the neutral section or uh, the section without any uh, compressive or tensile stress uh, and of course if uh, uh, you have beams of other section let us say triangular beam or something like that then you can evaluate mid section but that you'll do anyway in engineering mechanics so i'll not get into that much detail here i'm trying to simply present the idea from engineering mechanics okay uh, at a easily understandable level okay so this is what you get uh, delta now uh, uh, once i substitute the value of ia i can uh, do it for uh, just about any beam for example if i had a circular beam so what will be ia you know that moment of inertia of disc about diameter is what uh, that is mr square by 4 so here you will put ar square by 4 instead of mass you just put ar a uh, area so ar square by 4 and a is pi r square so that will become pi r to the power 4 divided by 4 in case i had a circular section beam but uh, for the ncrt problem we have a rectangular section beam so what is the moment of area for rectangular section beam so this is b and this is d and this is the mid section so you, if it were a massive plate uh, the moment of inertia would have been uh, m d square by 12 right m d square by 12 so instead of mass you substitute for area and area is b into d so moment of area simply becomes uh, in, you put uh, ad into uh, d square by 12 that becomes b d cube by 12 okay and uh, uh, just substitute this moment of area in equation 12 and you get delta is wl cube upon 4 bd cube y so i hope you enjoyed this uh, problem and uh, uh, another interesting problem i have in mind is to calculate the simple harmonic motion suppose you hang a weight and uh, you just pull it a little bit then what will happen this b this uh, weight will start oscillating up and down and that would be another interesting problem if you want you can play with that idea uh, it's not very difficult after knowing this theory and uh, i hope you all enjoyed this uh, video uh, as much as i enjoyed making it and uh, please uh, if you did like my effort on this video and if you did appreciate uh, this derivation please do uh, like this video uh, and uh, share this video in the study groups telegram groups or what whatsapp groups wherever you might be part of in the uh, physics study groups and please do keep coming to my channel 